Hello NASCAR fans, I'm Chris Terrell, I'm here with RotorPros.com bringing my breakdown of the Foxwood Resort Casino 301 from New Hampshire Motor Speedway on Sunday. So we're going to look at it here today, I'm going to go over some notes, I'm going to look at the cheat sheet, we're going to look at uh, the track, some flat track performance, as well as some track history and then some practice information and qualifying information as well. Um, so we had, uh, we're back to a normal race weekend here. We had practice one and qualifying on Friday, followed by the final two practices uh, on Saturday, which are today. Um, so the, the lineup is official. We do have some notes that we're going to go over here with some drivers um, that had some problems. Ryan Newman um, got into the wall in opening practice and he will go to a backup car. Um, despite his qualifying time, he will go to the back and start the race from the back, as well as Alex Bowman. He broke a drive shaft in his qualifying run, and then he also wrecked that backup car that he went to in final practice. So they ac will actually be using the 48's backup car. They'll have no laps run on that backup car. So he's kind of a little bit of a fade here for me this week, especially starting from the back. Denny Hamlin is also in a backup car from a uh, wreck, not really a wreck, but he hit the wall, damaged his car in opening practice. And then we've got William Byron as well. He got into the wall in practice number two on Saturday, the same with Kyle Larson. So we've got five drivers starting from the rear because of backup cars, but unlike last week, like with the inspection on race day and stuff, these drivers for fantasy will use their starting positions that are on the cheat sheet, but will be starting from the back. So they'll start with negative place differential. So keep that in mind when constructing your lineups. The only one I'm really uh, fading because of that, I guess, would be Bowman because he's in his third car. No, um, no laps run in that car, and it's not even his car. It's the 48's backup car. I mean, they're going to be pretty close, but they're going to be guessing on the setup, probably going to struggle early. Um, if they get back inside the top 10 by the end of the race, I would be, uh, you know, they, they, they would probably be ecstatic. Um, he's going to be super low on there. So if you want to go super contrarian, I guess, but I'm going to be fading that. So some other things, the PJ1 compound is going to be applied to the track. This week look like that could be a lot of the trouble why these cars are, are uh, having troubles in turn three, especially. That's where the bumps are. And that those bumps also happen to be right in the braking zone, so it, it makes it very difficult. So it is a very tough track. Um, it's, it's a flat track, 12 degrees of bank, and as you can see here, this image as well, some of the track information is from Fantasy Racing Cheat Sheet. Make sure to go over and check them out. They got a lot of ton of information for free, and then even more information when you sign up um, for a member. I've been a member for a few years. They have excellent information on there. So let's have a look at the last six races here at New Hampshire. First of all, this is the 750 horsepower package, the same with all road courses and tracks under uh, 1.25 miles. So not a whole bunch of changes from the past. So track history is something I'm definitely going to be looking at very closely this week. And just looking at, you know, the dominator, you know, we've seen the correlation be about 0.5 to 0.6. So starting up front definitely helps. It's it's not as key as you would think. Like last year, Kevin Harvick won from the 14th position. We did have Kyle Busch win from the pole. Um, the first race in 2017, Denny Hamlin won from 8th, Kevin Harvick 19th, uh, Matt Kansas from 18th, and then Matt Kansas from 13th. So only twice has the winner come from the, the top 10 in the last six races, once from the pole. Other than that, it looks like you know you can get some place differential points here. We'll look at that when it comes to qualifying. While there was no driver to lead 100 plus laps last year, that was definitely an outlier as the 14 previous races at New Hampshire before that all had at least one driver leading 100 or more laps. And then before that race as well, um, there was two drivers to lead 100 or more laps in three of the four races before that. So it's definitely a dominator track, so we're going to want to look at 10 lap averages for that, um, which I love these weekends that have the practices on Saturday because we know the drivers are going to be working on those long runs, going to be working on strictly their race setup versus the qualifying um, that sometimes comes with the two practices that come before qualifying. So good bit of information to go over here this week. As you can see, I've got some uh, guys highlighted here already. I've got a few more coming. So first up, actually, before we get into that, let's look at some flat track performance. So what I did this week is I went back and looked at the short flat tracks, which is New Hampshire, Richmond, Martinsville, and Phoenix, and look at the performance on all of those tracks, just going back to the start of last year. So we've got the finishes here, um, and then we've also got DraftKings average in 2019, just because it is a little bit of a different set up just the, the rear spoilers a bit different i mean this is not that much of an aero track so it's not going to make that much of a difference but if you wanted to compare 2019 on flat tracks versus 2018 you can do that here 
and then we've got uh, fantasy averages for uh, that whole time span, which is the last 10 races on the flats here as well. So as you can see, Kyle Busch is right at the top. He's got nine top fives, 10 top tens in those 10 races, along with four wins and a two and a half average finish on flat tracks. So he's definitely at the top. Uh, Kevin Harvick's right behind him. He's only got the two wins, but he's right up there with Kyle with 10 top tens. And then Martin Truex Jr. joins those three as the only three drivers with at least seven top fives in those last 10 races on the short flat. So definitely use this one. Referencing um, is going to be big for me. And I have added over on the main cheat sheet page the flat average so you can actually model it in if you make your own copy. And for anyone that's new to the sheet, if you want to make your own copy, um, adjust this model however you'd like. You can go up to File, click Make a Copy name it whatever you'd like and click OK. It'll open up an editable version of that and then you can go ahead and change these numbers. And As you do that, I, I always like it to add up to 100 here and you can pretty much look at anything from qualifying practice differential, practice average, um, 10 lap averages, that sort of thing, track history and kind of make your own model. But this is what I've got set up here for this week. So number one of my model, Kyle Busch, like I said, he's been awesome on the flat tracks. He's finished second and first in his last two races at New Hampshire. He's qualified on the front row. He was fourth and third in the final two practices and third and second in 10 lap averages. So he looks like he's got a dominant car. Should be able to get up front, be one of those dominator drivers this week. I think he's at least one. I don't think we see two drivers lead 100 plus laps, but I think he's definitely one of the drivers I like best for um, getting out front and leading. His teammate Martin Trex Jr. has also been good here. He was top 5 and 10 lap averages in both final practices. Definitely like to see from a long run car starting 6. So he does give you a little bit of place differential, but not really a whole lot. Um, Kevin Harvick starting 14th. He's kind of burned some people uh, lately, myself included. He's led some laps on some of those other tracks. But uh, starting 14th this week, I'm going to go back to the well for GPP. Show top 5 speed and 10 lap averages in those final two practices. He has been good here uh, over long run and flat tracks like I talked about. He is second to Kyle Busch in average finishes on the flat tracks since the start of 2019. Not as high in the fantasy scoring just because a lot of the laps led have come from Kyle Busch and Martin Trex Jr. And that's where a lot of the fantasy scoring, even Brad Kozlowski as well, led some laps in those flat tracks to take away from some of that from Harvick. But again, I don't think Harvick's going to get up and be a dominator and lead this. But to start in 14th, I think he's uh, definitely got top five potential. Um, makes for an excellent pivot off those top two JGR cars. Brad Kozlowski stands out starting on the front row as well. He followed that up with a second in practice two on Saturday, fifth and 10 lap average, and then sixth in the final practice and third and 10 lap average. So he looks like he's got a, a dominant uh, top five car poss possibility of uh, getting out and leading the laps early. Uh, what I noticed from watching the I believe it was the start of the final practice. They were showing the long run speeds and comparing Kyle Busch and Brad Kozlowski. And what, what we've seen is they were very comparable cars and lap times going through laps 1 to 15. And then once we got to that 15 to 20 to 25 laps, Kozlowski's car fell off a lot more while Kyle Busch has stayed fairly consistent um, in lap time. So it looks like Kyle's got a little bit better car than Kozlowski. So even for more money, I do lean Kyle Busch as my top guy this week. Kyle's teammate Denny Hamlin also stands out. He's number two in the model. A lot of that has to do with him starting 23rd, so he does give us some elite uh, place differential value. We don't need a win out of him to hit value this week, even at his price, 9700 11.5 on FanDuel. But starting 23rd is my top place differential play. He was second in final practice, 10th and 10 lap averages, and 7th and 10 lap averages in the second practice as well, so definitely stands out. Ryan Blaney, another one of my top picks this week. Uh, he's been just consistently fast all weekend, starting from the fifth position. Fastest in final practice, one lap and ten lap averages. Uh, top five in those areas in the second practice as well. And then going down, look at some. Uh, Chris Busher stands out. He started in 25th. He has finished 25th here at New Hampshire in three straight races. I believe it's 25th, 23rd, and 21st. Um, so he's finished at or better than that position in three straight. He showed not a whole bunch of speed um, better, but he was 17th in practice too, didn't have a 10 lap run. And then he was 25th in final practice, 22nd in 10 lap averages. So anywhere between 20 and 25th, I think you're still getting value from Busher at 7,107K on FanDuel. 
So those are a few of my core plays. You can see the rest on the members only cheat sheet. Something I want to look at now is just some of the contests. I'm going to look at DraftKings specifically this week. Um, I'll cover a little bit of FanDuel next week. So going by NASCAR, uh, sorting by the cup race here. I'll be concentrating on the $4 20 max, uh, the Chrome Horn, 20K to first, 10K. So very nice flat payout. It's only, it's only a 20 max. Um, so we're going to jump in there. I'll also be looking at uh, the single entries, three entry maxes, uh, getting into the bump and run in the hot rod there, the $20 and $3 level, um, pretty much all the single entries. And then something else I like have been doing quite a bit lately is going down into the satellites qualifiers and going down to the bottom and playing the steps. So you start out $2 in step one and you move your way up into the $7, $25, and $88 range. Um, so in that final range, $88, you can win just look at it here, $200. First and second get $200, and third gets another shot at that step four. You can also use those $88 tickets as well in some of the big tournaments um, at any sport. It doesn't matter what sport you play, you can use it, and those pop up sometimes. Got some really good contests at that level. This is a little bit safer of a way, you know, $200 off of a $2 buy-in, um, and there's only six people in those contests. So, But we're going to jump in, look at the $4 chrome horn, and just how I'm going to go about building some cores this week uh, with some of the drivers that I talked about. So Kyle Busch, I'm going to be overweight on him this week. He's probably going to be the highest owned driver, 60 to 70 percent GPP. I'm probably going to have a little bit more, like to have a little bit more in the field on the most popular driver if that's the guy that I'm going to key in on, which I am. Um, so I'm going to go Kyle Busch, and then let's just say you go down to talked about uh, Ryan Newman's going to be starting from a backup car, starting from the back of the pack. I believe that's 37th this week. Um, somewhere in that range, 35th to 37th, depending on how they line those um, five drivers up that are starting from the back. I He's been good here. He's one of the drivers that's won here three times in his career. He's very cheap. I, you know, he showed between that 20th and 25th kind of speed. I think he's even got upside of, you know, 15th to 20th, even though he's starting from the back. It may take him some time, but we're not looking from, for a dominator from him anyway. Um, so if it takes him to the end of stage two, start of stage three to get up to the, you know, inside that top 20, inside that top 25 to start giving you positive place differential. I think it's okay to be patient with that because we're not expecting a lot of fast laps and stuff from him anyway. But at 7,600, he makes a great um, points per dollar value play. And then I talked about Chris Buescher. So with that combination, you can, you're kind of looking at this mid-range here still as well. So if you wanted to go and pair him with just say, for instance, uh, Eric Almirola, I got him as a GPP play. So if you go with that four driver core and then just kind of, you know, go, go with three. Let's just stick with three. We got Bush, Newman, and Busher. So then we go fill in with three other drivers in this lineup. And then I would duplicate this three driver core into my next lineup. Um, and be, being that I'm going to be overweight on Kyle Busch, I probably run this core in, say, like five different lineups and then just switch in the other three. And then I'm going to go and take Newman and Busher out, and I'm going to build a different core. So maybe pair them with Jones and Hamlin. Very tough. Obviously, you're going to have to go down and punt. I'm going to talk about some of the punt plays that I like on the live show tomorrow morning. So definitely tune in for that as well. Um, but if you want to go with the core, GGR core, you could definitely look at it that way. Or you could just go Denny Hamlin if you wanted to go down to a Busher. I definitely like this core a lot. Leaves you an average of 7,100 left over, so you can go a couple cheap guys and then jump up. Um, you can kind of do things a few different ways in the five five lineups that you do with this three-driver core, so that's the way I'm kind of looking at uh, building those cores. So if Kyle Busch does go off, win the race, leads 150 laps, you've got a lot of exposure with different drivers with Kyle Busch, so you have the best chance to capitalize and win that GPP rather than having, say, two of your 20 lineups with Kyle Busch or even five of them but you're swapping in all the other five drivers. Um, so if Bush finishes first, Hamlin gets up there, gets a top five with his place differential value. Busher gets up and finishes a top 20 with his. Those three drivers give you excellent points per dollar value. You want to have as many combinations of those three guys together as you can to capitalize and maybe try and win that GPP. So that's how I go about building my core lineups. I uh, went over some of my core drivers, looked at the track a little bit. So... Um, like I said, tomorrow morning, probably about 12, somewhere between 11 and 12 o'clock Eastern, I'm going to jump on, do a live show, answer some questions, um, go over the rest of my drivers, um, how my core's coming together, because I'm going to be building lineups tonight, and uh, 
you know, pretty much just go over any other topics that come up. So make sure to jump in on that. I'll be sharing that link in the Roto Pros chat room as well as on my Twitter at Jaeger underscore bombs nine as well. So if you have any questions until then, definitely hit me up in those two areas. Um, and if you're not a Roto Pros member yet, make sure to get over to rotopros.com. Get your free trial. Come in, see what we're all about. We do a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, we've got chat rooms set up for all the different sports, um, covering news, weather, pretty much everything leading up to lineup lock. I'm in there about you know 12 to 16 hours a day. So come in, see what we're all about, and then I'm pretty sure you're going to be able to stick. You will want to stick around and uh, join one of our weekly, monthly, or yearly subscriptions. Thanks a lot for checking out the video, and like I said, see you tomorrow morning.